Hi, pregnant moms. This is Dr. Linda Burke Galloway, author of The Smart Mother's Guide to a Better Pregnancy, blogger and OBGYN physician. Today, I want to talk a bit about turning the baby if it's in a breech position. It's called external cephalic version. And basically what that means is that someone's going to try to turn the baby um, externally, meaning they're going to put their hands on your abdomen and try to move it as opposed to internally where they would do a pelvic examination and try to turn it um, internally. They used to do that many years ago. They've stopped because uh, they've had, there were complications and it was just too risky. Many babies got hurt, moms got hurt, and so they no longer do what's called an internal version. So um, let's say that you are 37 weeks and you have never had a baby before and the baby hasn't turned. Uh, actually, someone I know had this problem and they came to me and that's why I decided to talk about this. So here, here's what needs to happen. Number one, um, you should have already had an ultrasound to make sure that the baby has no problems, uh, no what we call anomalies, meaning, you know, like the heart uh, isn't properly developed or something of that nature. Make sure that there are no fetal anomalies, nothing's wrong physically with the baby. The second thing that needs to be done is they need to get your blood type. If you're RH negative, you need to get a shot of Rogan before you have the procedure because sometimes um, there could be slight bleeding and you want to make sure that you know, you're covered with a Rogan because Rogan will protect you and your baby um, from having problems such as excessive bleeding. Uh, another topic, RH negative, but basically if you're RH negative, you should get Rogam. Okay, so um, where are you going to have this procedure done and who's going to do it? Very important because you want to make sure whomever you're going to see, they know what they're doing. My personal recommendation and professional recommendation would be that you see a high-risk doctor, a maternal fetal medicine specialist, because they have three years of additional training in terms of managing high-risk pregnancies and they do procedures and so one of the procedures that they usually do is external version now does this work um, in 65 percent of the cases it does but you know there's certain conditions uh, women who have never had a baby before are a little less successful than women who've had a baby because if you've had a baby that uterus has been stretched with a previous child and so that's what you want. You want to relax the baby so that when they start to manipulate the baby um, it, it's easier. Um, the baby should either be in a sitting position um, or uh, what we call a transverse lie position meaning it's lying across. If the feet are first um, then you can't do it. That's called a footling breach and it's not going to work because the cord can get all tangled up in the feet and you can have serious problems. So uh, sitting down position, fetal, no footling breach. Okay, so um, you've checked out the person who you want to have it done. The other thing you need to, to ask is where is it going to be done and ideally you want it to be done either in a hospital or near a hospital because God forbid if there are some problems you want to make sure that you can be quickly transported to a hospital. So all right what are they going to do in terms of the actual procedure? What they're going to do is they're going to give you a medication called terbutaline. Well first they're going to monitor your baby to make sure that the heartbeat isn't too fast or too slow. Okay because if it's too fast or too slow, then the procedure can't be done. Then um, they're going to monitor the baby's heart rate, heart rate, excuse me. And um, after the heart rate is okay, they're gonna put a lot of jelly on your abdomen and then they're going to try to turn. Now, one more thing I need to mention. Um, the back of the baby is very, very important. The baby should be like, I'm looking at this camera and so let's say I, I would be looking at you. Um, I should be able to see the baby's back. That means, you know, we call it back up. If the baby's back is not showing, if I see the chest, then the procedure is not going to work because they have to manipulate the baby and in doing so, the baby's back needs to be facing the outside world. Okay, so after um, we've established all of that, then we attempt to turn the baby. And it's done, uh, you know, with a lot of jelly manipulation. 
Um, it, and also it should be done with ultrasound guidance. You know, we should be able to see what's happening in real time, you know, as opposed to trying to do it. No one should try to do it without, the, you know, um, an ultrasound being present. So uh, how many times should it be done? Only three times. If, you know, someone attempts to turn the baby and it's not um, turning for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes the baby is so low in the pelvis that you just can't manipulate it. If after three times, three attempts, the procedure still doesn't work, then they should stop. They should not attempt to have it done again. The other thing that needs to be done after the procedure is, is completed, um, they need to monitor the baby again. They need to do what's called a non-stress test for about 30 minutes, watch the baby breathe and move, and you should be able to um, feel the baby kick. And one more thing, you know, there should be enough fluid around the baby so that they can do this procedure. If there's not enough uh, fluid, it's not going to work. And if there's too much fluid, um, something that we call polyhydramnios, if it's too much fluid, it's not going to work either. So all of those conditions need to be met. And uh, hopefully the procedure will be successful. And if it's not, um, you will more than likely require a C-section. And uh, you know, I wouldn't look at it as failure if the procedure doesn't work um, because the bottom line is that you want a healthy baby. And so if you have to have a C-section um, and the baby is healthy, that's what's important. So that is my brief talk about external cephalic version or turning the baby from feet first to head first. I hope that you guys will check out my website www.smartmothersguide.com and pick up a copy of my book. It'll be very helpful.